What's up, Game Devs? A T Chan here, and welcome to episode 41 of Game Dev Loadout, where I chat with the best people in the, in the game industry seven days a week. We will learn about their background, the challenges they face, and the tools they use to reach success. And today's future guest is Zachary Barringer. Zach, it is a go time. Are you ready? I'm ready. Awesome. He has been making video games for over 12 years, and also he has been making tutorials on youtube for over five years to help us game devs learn how to make great games and get us motivated his youtube name is real touch gml and his website is coding made simple.com so make sure you check him out so go ahead zach give us a bit about your personal life and how you got started in the game industry yeah so uh i was about 10 years old when i started i uh, picked up game maker 7 at the time and uh you know before then, I was always, you know, making games uh, on paper and journals, all sorts of stuff. I really had a fascination for creating things. And uh, when I came across Game Maker when I was about 10 years old, it was like the best fit ever. And I took the next 10 to 12 years of my life learning how to program, getting into this industry, creating things. Um, it's been an awesome journey so far. And uh, the best part is I'm only at the beginning of it. So... Nice. What made you go into like doing tutorials online? Well, originally when I was learning how to use Game Maker, I went on YouTube a lot and I was going through um, these different tutorials. But these tutorials, like they weren't very good. Uh, you know, they were very like uh, text based. Nobody was really like explaining on the mic how to do certain things. And I thought that I could do it better. So I created a channel, Real Touch GML, for real tutorials because I wasn't going to make any of that the text-based, you know, kind of low quality tutorials. I was going to make real, really good tutorials and really try and help people so I can increase their learning curve better than where I went through it. Definitely. I really appreciate that. And well, what do you consider your main area of expertise? It would probably at this point be programming, but I'm trying to go into design more. I'm trying to figure out like what makes a game really good. And that's not through the programming. That's just through the the design of the game. Uh, but right now, so I'm kind of getting into that, but programming is pretty much my expertise. Now I can pretty much have an idea in my head and I can create that out on programming, but I want to increase the quality of those ideas and really get something that's different and uh, that nobody's seen before. And what is something about uh, programming or game design that game does probably don't know about, but they should? I would say when you're creating different games like that, make sure to stay on to the same main idea that you had to begin with. Because especially with new game developers, what's happening is you are doing like this feature creep sort of thing where, you know, you're creating these levels and you're like, okay, well, it'd be great if I added this into the game. And then because I added this, now I want to add this into the game that's going to relate to that. Next thing you know, you have a project that was going to take you maybe a month or two to create. And now it's created and now it's taking you, you know, six to seven months to create <laughs> because you keep on adding these new features over and over and over again, which are really cool features. But realistically looking at it and saying, well, let's let's stick to the main idea of the game, though, and let's <laughs> let's finish that before we can maybe start adding sort of say these DLC type of things into the game. You make a great point because, yeah, when we add something to uh, the game mechanic, we just want to add more to it. And then it gets a bit too complex. And I guess we get too attached to it. And, and that's sometimes not a good thing. Uh, aside from that kind of mistake, what are other common mistakes, even at a pro level, that people usually make? A lot of the times, like not necessarily at a pro level, but people will go into creating games when they don't exactly know how to do it. And that they have these success barriers because they haven't taken the time to do their homework and learn how to actually program correctly. So when they get these ideas, they can't execute them quite as well as they would like. You know, in their in their head, it looks like this awesome idea, but they can't actually transfer that to the physical state. And they get uh, unmotivated because it's not as good as they thought it was going to be and they give up. A lot of the questions I get on there, yes, yeah, the programming, um, I'm getting this error, very simple errors, but yet they're watching a series that I've created on a pretty advanced game. So you need to, you need to do your homework and understand exactly uh, how to do it through experience and the knowledge that you've learned 
to actually execute that before before you get into this huge project. Oh, and th- and that leads us to another point. Like, what if people have to teach themselves to be better at your expertise? Like, what would you you suggest they use? Of course, you know they could use your uh, YouTube tutorials to learn more. But is there like any books or anything else in particular they could use to like just gain that valuable knowledge? Yeah, sure. So a lot of what I did was I didn't read specific general or, you know, just like general books on programming. Uh, what I did was I would love to go into a project with a very simple idea that I didn't know how to do, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to make it like an actual game. Like I just wanted to say like, okay, how do I, let's work with like surfaces now on a programming level. Let's work with adding like um, parallax backgrounds or realistic water or real time physics in the game. So I would create these these engines and look up not just on YouTube, but also throughout forms, um, uh, uh, blogs uh, from people and like see how they do it, see where they're coming from, see kind of what their theories are on that type of stuff and then get it worked out just because I'm curious about it. So then once I go through that, you know, dozens and dozens of times with these different projects, now it actually opens up my window of creativity in my mind because I know I can do that. Interesting. Yeah, because you're looking up forms, you're looking up blogs to see if anyone else have done it before. And basically, you model after that. You learn from that and uh, you avoid that mistake. So definitely do that research. Uh, overall, what are your key principles for better game development to make sure like the uh, process is smooth? Are you doing everything uh, correctly as possible? Uh, what, what's the, your key principle? My key principles would probably be like the number one key principle is that you stick to an idea and you finish it just right off the bat. Um, Not getting into this feature creep like I was talking about previously and also having having some passion behind the game that you're making. In other words, you don't want to think about this project and kind of force yourself to work on it today. You want you want to have that game have a magnetic pull to you. So where you you can't stop programming this game, you can't stop testing it, you can't stop sending it to your friends, seeing what they think about it, having you know anybody in your household play it, and adding in these fe- you know these features that you originally thought about, and like just really accomplishing it. Because if you can get to a state like that, then it's going to be really easy for you to go from this game from scratch to completing it. And that's just one of the, like the major key principles of game development that I, that's helped me so much because I've gone into games where just like to learn and stuff like that. I'm not really like, I'm not pulled to it exactly, but I know I got to I got to do it. And I got to learn, which is fine, which you'll have to do throughout uh, your game development career. But when you create that one game that you're like, yes, this is going to be published up on steam or wherever you like to go. Uh, that magnetic pull of, of passion is just drives me finish that up and make it the best possible game I can. Oh, man, you have to have that passion because game development can be very hard. It can be very long and difficult. And it's that passion is what keep you creating, keep you going. And let's take this on a more personal level. And like I just said before, you have to have that passion and games can be very difficult. What was the worst moment of your career? That one moment that's still vivid in your mind? Be very detailed and tell us that personal story. Yeah, sure. So this was probably when I was creating So Much Blood, uh, which was my first indie game that I put up on Steam. And uh, originally that project was going to take one month to create, but it actually ended up taking about six months. And that was probably the hardest point because I ran into so many programming struggles with it. Uh, This is a game that I was going to do a professional hard launch on Steam with. And there was a lot of pressure on my side as well because I had this YouTube channel because everybody's learning from me and uh, I had to make it the best I possibly could. So I think I put on a lot of pressure on myself rather than because I think people were expecting this, you know, insane game that I was going to create. And uh, so I put a lot of pressure onto that and it actually, it, it took that magnetic pull a little bit and uh, it weakened it because I didn't, I didn't want to work on it just basically because of fear that I wasn't going to be able to make everybody super excited about this game. And that was actually, you know, besides for programming design, that was one of the hardest parts I've had to deal with now because I wanted to make it the best. I wanted everybody to love it. 
And, you know, especially when you're going into indie games, not everybody's going to love your game because you pick a certain genre and not everybody likes the genre that you're going to make. So that's a bad mindset to begin with right off the bat. But, uh, you know, I was very, I was very uh, scared to uh, release it, which I know sounds weird. Um, and I was kind of making excuses for myself to, you know, delay it, I guess you could say, uh, you know, adding different things or this needs to be better than what it is and constantly like reamping it, reworking the systems uh, until I said, you know what, this is this is good. I like this now. Let's let's put it out there. Yeah, I can't imagine that because, like you said, you have a you know a popular YouTube channel, so there's high expectations of you, and then you know you start to get this fear kicking in that your game is not good enough. What do you want to make sure game does take away from that? Because I'm pretty sure people have that that fear that the game is just not going to work or people is not going to like it, and then they just never show it to anyone. What do you want to make sure game does take away from that experience? Well, I would say not to worry about that, and if you like the game then you should release the game because this is not going to be the only game you ever release in your life. Uh, Especially if you're passionate about indie games, you know, you're going to be creating a lot of different projects. They're not going to be the same genre, but they're all going to be games that you yourself have gone through that journey and you like to, to make and play. So I wouldn't worry about that necessarily. I wouldn't worry about, um, on, on some level finances, uh, I know it, it can be different for every situation, but you know, like banking on, let's say like a Kickstarter or something to get this game up or, or, uh, anything like that. I would say, don't, don't worry about that so much and, and make the game. Don't have fear going into it. Yeah. It, the whole point of game is, is to have fun. So try, you know, uh, be passionate, have fun. Yeah, don't let that exactly. fear kick in. Do not let that fear kick in because it is a real struggle. And, and it is true. Like, you know, to me, I believe you do have to have thick skin because online comments are are sometimes extremely mean. <laughs> and <Definitely>. so <laughs> you have to have thick skin. And that does, you do grow that over time. So you just got to keep pushing forward. Now, what is the best investment you've made? And it could be an investment of money, time, or energy. And how did you decide to make that investment? I would say the best investment I've ever made is my YouTube channel. I've taken a lot of money that I put into it. I've taken a lot of time, a lot of time to create these videos. And at the end of the day, you know, I I love making indie games, but I also love teaching people, showing them that they can create this game that they've thought about. It is possible. You know, I, I went from, you know, 10, 12 years old, even if I didn't start, even if I started today, Like, and which a lot of people are, and they're, you know, I get emails from people in the 30s and 40s that are starting game development right now. And it's harder for them because, you know, they're, they're later in their life and it takes a lot of time to learn this stuff. You can't have fear, like we were saying. And I like to show that it's possible that anybody can do it. And so the best investment I made was my YouTube channel where I can now get these emails from people or these comments saying, like, wow, you showed me that I can actually do this. And it's a lot simpler than I thought. Yeah, and that is an extremely awesome feeling when you're uh, helping someone out, you know, you're contributing to something you love. It's mm-hmm. like, I got like a, a message from somebody. I just start launched my podcast this past Monday and someone messaged me saying that they love my show. And it's just a really great feeling when you're out there helping people and we're both doing it for the video game industry. And, you know, we both love video games. And so I can't wait to see, uh, the game industry constantly growing and growing. And as the game industry is growing, what is the one thing you are most excited about today in the game industry? Well, I think that the direction of where indie games are going is the most exciting part about it because you're getting like, we now have the technology to where just one or two man teams can actually start creating things, you know, with like unity and unreal, they can start creating these fantastic games. They just look so beautiful. Um, and you would think there's a whole team behind there, but there's, there's not, there's just, you know, one to two people and they're creating these, uh, uh, com- beautiful, beautiful games, uh, with awesome gameplay, you know, puzzle games, all this sort of stuff. And, uh, it's so possible for that to happen now. So we're seeing a, a big growth in the indie game community because of that. And the more people we can get in here, like creating games, being creative, thinking outside of the box helps everybody. Oh yeah. And what do you tell those people that think the market is oversaturated and so they don't want to make games? Like, 
that's the wrong mindset to me. What do you want to tell them? Well, I would be optimistic while being realistic about it. Yeah, it's o- it's oversaturated a little bit right now, but also know that technology is always changing. You know, Steam is one of the big ones right now, but there may be something else in the future. And uh, what I would do going into it is try and figure out how to stick out and don't be like completely bold with it, like creating something like completely new that nobody even really wants to play, but stick out a little bit. Um, try and get some sort of portfolio of video games, try and get a backing behind you. And that's going to make it a lot easier for you to uh, get instant feedback on what you're doing. And um, instead of just creating a game and then putting it up on there and then just letting it sit, because if you do that, chances are it's not going to do very well. You need to put in the work besides just creating the game to get people following you and you as a developer and the game that you're creating, they're following you. Even if that's just creating a simple Twitter account and being very active on it, uh, you want to get some sort of following behind you. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, I think that's, that's one of the number one things that I would do today to, uh, to stick out and, uh, create something that's successful and get more sales. Yeah. Marketing and branding is so crucial. Now, if they want to find your game, you have to brand and market yourself. Exactly. Even even if that's creating like a very simple website as well that just links to all of your games that you made. Even if they're like the the simple little games that are free that they can download off of you know wherever Media Fire your website. Uh, getting getting that out there, just showing that you have made all these different games and building up uh, your rep it was really crucial. Yeah, just have something that players can go to so they can see more about your game. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Uh, don't forget Game Devs. You can check out GameDevLoadout.com for all the show notes. And now, Zach, we have reached a crunch time. They face that Game Devs dread, but we are here to overcome it. So basically, I will ask you quick questions, and you'll be giving us a ton of valuable information in return. Are you ready to crush it and release the show? I'm ready. Yes. What was holding <laughs> you back from becoming a game developer? Uh, fear. What's a personal habit that contributes to your success? Learning every day, reading blogs, uh, going on YouTube channels, seeing what's new, seeing what other people are doing out there, and even looking at different books on Amazon and things like that. Uh, learning every day is very crucial or else you're going to fall behind. Continuous improvement, definitely. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Aim for impact. And that wasn't actually given to me personally, but I, I saw that and... Uh, Aim for impact rather than aiming for the masses. So if you can if you can create a product or something like that that really impacts somebody's life, uh, that's going to be so much more beneficial than aiming for something that just a lot of people are going to see. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. How has a failure set you up for later success? That's all through experience. So a lot of failure that you go through can be looked at as a very successful thing because – once you go through that failure, you're kind of, I guess, in a sense, toughening up that skin a little bit. And you've been here, you've done that, you understand where you went wrong. And there are lessons, tons and tons of lessons throughout, not just game development, but life in general, where uh, throughout those lessons, you're going to come out on the other side <clears throat> winning. Is there a, a particular failure that you remember that you really enjoyed and it just made you much better in the end? Yeah, I mean, I've created I've created several games that I thought were going to explode, and I was this was going to be the game that I'm going to put out there, and uh, everyone's going to love it. And I've I failed on those games, and just throughout that, I wouldn't say it's one specific one, but you know, I've probably created thirty or forty games that I've gone into that mindset with and not finished, and that led it all the way. All those failures led up to so much blood what I actually released. Mm, nice, nice. Share an internet resource we game does should use. So you you can go to um you can go to YouTube. You can uh, there's tons and tons of great information on YouTube. You can also read some books as well. But I started a lot on YouTube, and especially nowadays, there's a ton of great channels out there that can pretty much show you everything you want to know. So if you want to get into like let's say website design or like HTML games. There's channels out there for that. Uh, I also run a website, CodyMadeSimple.com, that has full courses on there that you can learn from. But other than that, I would just, yes, yeah, stick with stick with the internet for now. Stick with YouTube. Stick with these channels. Depending on what you want to do, if you want to do Unity, if you want to do Game Maker, you know, whatever you like to do, it's all out there for you. 
Yep, you just gotta go out there and get started. Now, this next question is a bit of a doozy, so take your time if you need to. Imagine you woke up the next morning in a brand new world and you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have today. Your food and shelter is taken care of and you have a laptop. What would you do step by step on the path to become a great game developer? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, well, first off, I would uh, I would create some social media accounts, get my branding out there. So whatever I'd like to do, what I um, get a logo made, maybe hop on Fiverr, <laughs> get a get a logo made, and uh, start talking about game development. Well, it's probably be to myself that I'm talking about game development for a long time before I start building a following, and start creating a very simple game, get a portfolio of games going, and uh, start putting them out there for people to see. That, that's that's the best thing you can do is just, even if like even if they're little tiny games, and it's nothing new, it's nothing revolutionary, but like they're just games that you've created you have a certain art style. You maybe have a certain design uh, that you like to uh, copy back and forth. Uh, you know, putting them out there, people are going to catch on. People are going to see these, and uh, you know, it's not going to be millions of people that see them. But all it takes, you know, is a couple thousand, and they start sharing your stuff because they really see that hey, this guy can go somewhere. And uh, when you get that going, it just it just goes on from there. You know, you're just building momentum and momentum. Yeah, build that community, build that raving fans. They can help you uh, actually market your game as well. And funny you mentioned Fiverr. That's how I made my logo. And that's another thing is that <laughs> it's so cheap online to get stuff made now. In, you know, If you're not good at art, there's Fiverr to help you do stuff. So it's, you just got to go online and search for stuff. Zach, now we have reached the end. Go ahead and give us a parting piece of guidance in how we can connect with you. And then we'll say goodbye. I just want everyone to know that, you know, I'm, I'm just like everybody else. I'm always learning. Uh, I'm always failing and I have a few successes and <clears throat> I come across these challenges every day. So you need to break those success barriers and come out of the other side uh, with an amazing game. And it's not going to be an easy journey, but at the same time with your passion for it, you should enjoy the journey. And uh, if there was no journey and you just kind of put out a game that made you millions, and millions of dollars, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be happy because, you know, just take like Flappy Bird, for instance, you know, the guy, he, uh, he created this game. He was making, I don't know, whatever it was, $50,000 a day or <laughs> that could be <laughs> completely off. But, um, he, he wasn't happy in the end. Uh, he, he couldn't take the success because he didn't go through that journey of struggle to begin with. And I don't know the guy personally. So, um, that's just what I see from it. And he got that success very quick. And, uh, so all these failures that you go through are are put there on purpose so that you can get the lessons from it. And when you do have that success, you can actually really appreciate that success because of what you've been through. And how can we connect with you? You guys can go to CodyMadeSimple.com. Um, I have all my tutorials up there that you can look at. I have uh, some courses that I've built that uh, can be accessed right there on the website, as well as my YouTube channel, Real Tuts GML which I dedicate a lot of time to to put out as much free, awesome quality tutorials that I can to help you guys. Check them out, Game Dells. Zach is helping us out so much. Zach, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. And for that, we are truly grateful. Yeah, and we look forward to your future work. And until then, we will catch you next time. Thanks. Thank you, Game Dust, for listening. And remember that knowledge is only potential power. Execution is the game. I am so excited to announce our first sponsored giveaway with Game Dev Underground, where a winner can get a free one-hour consultation with the founder, Tim Rusbeck. So if you have any questions on building and launching your game, get on this giveaway ASAP. This is a $1,000 value, and it can be yours. All you have to do is go to the show notes page at Game Dev loadout.com and sign up for my email list that's it so until then keep on making great games and i will catch you on the next episode bye